So last night I got to watch the first two episodes of the new Star Wars Disney Plus series, The Acolyte. <laughs> Just to let you know also, this is gonna be a full spoiler review for episode one and two, so you've been warned. Now, going into the show was kind of, I had to block out everything that I've been hearing or seeing online. I haven't heard any spoilers. I've just, all I've seen, as always now, is that YouTube or, or basically the internet is just giving something so much criticism and hate even before giving it a chance. I kind of feel like it's a little bit unfair to do that, but that's just the internet now, and everyone's YouTube channel seems to just be doing that, which I feel creates this community of people of hate towards something before anyone's even given it a chance. So I kind of try to push myself away from all that because I have been watching these channels, and I do follow these people, and as much as I enjoy watching them, I also sometimes feel like, oh, you haven't seen it yet, so just give it a chance before you start saying all this negative stuff. So going into it was kind of like, I need to just blank everything out and just go in and watch it with an open mind. So I did. And I would say that my personal feelings and thoughts after I finished, finished episode two is that I'm a mixed bag. It's a, I'm kind of like somewhere in the middle with all of this. I feel like there was some really good moments and some boring moments and some really awful moments. So let's get into it. So I feel like episode one starts off really strong. I really enjoyed the opening act of episode one. We have our main character, one of our main characters, May, and then we have Carrie Ann Moss, Trinity. <laughs> we have her new Jedi Master character, Indara. This whole thing that happened, the whole fight scene in this bar, I thought was done really well. I was quite surprised. I have seen moments of this whole scene on trailers, I think they released the whole thing as a, as a, as a whole footage online, so you can watch the whole act the whole thing play out. Uh, I haven't watched all of that. Last night was the first time watching all of it f through properly. And I did really enjoy it. I was quite surprised. I thought the choreography was actually really good. I did enjoy the whole fighting. I thought it was done really well. I really liked how both of them have different styles. You know, May is like this badass martial artist and she's actually sick. If it is the same actress doing the the fighting, then she's amazing at, at martial arts because she does some really cool stuff. There's, you know, there's a lot of flips, a lot of backspins, overhead kicks, all these mad stuff going on. They even run up the walls and do like this Jedi jump up into the balcony, which I thought was really cool. I haven't seen Jedis do that in any of the Disney stuff really. I mean, we got that in the prequels. If you look back to like Obi-Wan and um, Qui-Gon when they're fighting Darth Maul, they're jumping well high and jumping really far down. And like Jedi's can do that. And I feel like we don't see that enough. It's almost like Disney tried to make it a bit more realistic and not have the Jedi's do stuff like this. But it was good to see it. I liked that. Um, and this whole fight sequence I thought was really good. I enjoyed it. It was quite funny because before watching this whole thing play out fully, Online in the trailers, I was thinking that combat looks okay, but it looks like really slow paced. But when I was watching it, I was like, actually, this is pretty decent. Like, it's not as slow as I thought. You've got May, who's this really fast martial artist who's doing all these flips and crazy stuff and throwing daggers and all these spins and stuff. And then you've got Indara, Master Indara, who's played by Carrie Ann Moss. Obviously, she's going to be like, oh, yeah, well, fucking dodge that. Well, just dodge that. And if I'll have a little bit of that and I'll have a little bit of fucking that. <laughs> But it made sense to me that it would that that's how the combat would work. You know, you've got a Jedi Master who's like this peaceful, mindful Jedi who's with the Force, who's just, you know, centered, who just knows everything's coming. You know, they feel the Force, they know what's going to fucking come their way in that. Just have a little bit of fucking that. Yeah. But they also have Mei who's like this, you know, really skilled martial artist it's like i felt like they did a good job with that now my problem is here is that like i said the spoilers in this i'm doing a full spoiler thing so indara gets killed my kills indara and i didn't like well i don't mind that happening because obviously the, they've created this impactful moment for the for the audience to go oh my god she killed a master jedi like and to be and to be invested in to care, but I didn't care because I don't I don't even know anything about any of them, so I have no idea why it's happened. I don't know any of the characters, so I didn't really care. All I cared about was I can't believe you've wasted Carrie Ann Moss like that. Like what a stupid decision. 
Like, if I had Carrie Anne Moss, basically Trinity, in my new Star Wars show, and she was a Master Jedi, and I'm also going to focus on making sure that, that, that we have all these really good choreographed fight scenes, Carrie Anne Moss would not die at all. She would just be there being like this, the, the most powerful Jedi of all of them, who's just so good at fighting. I would have kept her in there. You know, I wanted to see more. I think we are going to see more of her because I have seen other things throughout trailers with Carrie Ann Moss, whether it's flashbacks or somehow she's still alive. I don't think they're going to do that because going straight after, straight after this whole first act, the rest of the, the episode is basically trying to find out who has killed Master Indara. So she's definitely going to be dead. But that, that frustrates me. That that was the first thing that I was like, oh, why would you write that? Why would you write Carrie Ann Moss to die straight away in the first fucking five minutes? So anyway, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. The other positives, I would say, I just like the creature design. I thought the creature designs, and there's, there's quite a lot of different aliens in this, and I like that. I feel like some Star Wars shows kind of forget that there's so many aliens that we see in the prequels and stuff like this and in the originals but the prequels like really introduce a lot of different various types of aliens star wars has tons of aliens and a lot of the shows kind of don't include them as much i like that there's quite a lot here and i think the designs are done really well some of the set designs i thought were, were really nice and created very well um you know you can see there's been a lot of effort and time put into it the the world felt alive to me uh, it looked way better than Kenobi anyway. Kenobi looked like it was just an empty an empty place. and there were, it, You could tell Kenobi was just done on that volume screen where this one you can tell that they've got a lot bigger budget. They've actually got a way bigger budget than Kenobi as well, which is insane. But anyway, the visuals, the music were good, combat, choreography. The new characters, it's too early to say, I like them. But I'm not that bothered about them right now. I'm not invested in anyone right now. And then this is where it gets to become... I would say also, just another thing, is that I like that it's a new story. It's totally... We don't know anyone. It's a totally different time we haven't seen yet in live action. And uh, I, I like that as well. I find that to be a positive because it keeps me interested into what happened at this time. What else is going to happen? Like, I want to know more about the story. We also have that villain to look forward to, the Sith, which I'm going to get into that because we did get a reveal on him and I thought it was done so badly. But anyway, there is stuff here that I'm excited for, but it kind of ends there. Now, they're the positives. Now into like the rest of it. So I found that I was kind of just a little bit bored. Not bored, but it just was a bit boring. I wasn't that interested in anything else that happened after that whole first fight thing. There were some interesting moments. I was like, I was liking getting to know the characters a little bit more. Um, you know, I really like Sol. I think Sol's probably one of the strongest points in the show right now. Um, Osha, I, I don't mind the actress. I think she does a good enough job, but her character, it's too hard to say. But I'm, I just, I'm, I don't feel like I care that much about her storyline right now. They're trying to find May. May's like disappearing and vanishing. They're on this like bounty quest or mission to try and find her. And yeah, it's okay, it's enjoyable, but it's not engaging enough. There's no like big thing here that I'm like, oh my God, like, wow, that's so interesting. I need to see what happens. There's none of that here. So it feels like a bit stagnant. The, I feel like they need to include something that's gonna bring about this excitement of like why you want to care or why you want to stay interested in watching the show. They try to do that at the end of episode one, where all of a sudden they just cut to my walking or May, sorry, my May, whatever, walking down the beach, and you can just hear this like almost like um, Kylo Ren voice narrating over the top you could just hear some voice you can tell it's like a dark sinister voice straight away i knew it was going to be this new masked sith guy um and then we'd get to see him stood on top of this rock and he brings out his lightsaber this red lightsaber which looked pretty cool but that as a reveal that whole thing and what he says i thought was badly written and just the worst reveal it it kind of felt like it was building to something and it, it just completely fell flat on its face i was like oh shit okay is this is it we're gonna get introduced to him now yeah we did all oh, right it ended okay oh, okay wow well i didn't care about that then like, they could have done so much better with that he is I mean, by as far as I know, he is like the main sort of like 
evil entity villain thing in this show, but they revealed him in such a really poor way, and his dialogue was just a load of rubbish. They're obviously trying to explain what the Acolyte is. The, the Acolyte basically means someone who kills a Jedi without a weapon, and I just felt like it was rushed. It just felt rushed. It was like he says his dialogue basically telling the audience what an acolyte is, brings his lightsaber out and it cuts out. And I just felt like that was such a missed opportunity to really show how like dark this presence is, who this person is, who her master is, who is this guy? Give us something a bit more. Uh, the, the, just the whole writing, I thought, was rubbish in that, in that part. And uh, yeah, I was really disappointed. When it ended, I was like, oh my God, that was rubbish. <laughs> so that's kind of my summary of episode one. I'm obviously missing some stuff. I haven't written any notes. I'm just going off the top of my memory from I literally watched, watched it last night. So yeah, I am probably missing things. But you get the idea of how I felt and my thoughts on episode one. Episode two is basically pretty much the same thing. You know, they... We see May. she explains that she wants to go and kill four Jedi and take revenge on four Jedi. So she's hunting down Jedi to try and kill them. She goes to that guy who gives her the potion, who I just didn't think was that good of a character. I'm not interested in him. Um, she goes and then tries to kill that other Jedi, which, again, this had cool moments because I haven't seen a Jedi sat there levitating whilst meditating and someone trying to attack them and cannot even attack them all because they clearly got this powerful force field around them. That was a really cool moment. I liked it. I liked how Mai was, May, whatever, was trying to get through it. She couldn't. She's doing flips off the walls to try and hit him. She's throwing the daggers in. I actually thought that that was a pretty cool moment that I haven't seen before. But why did the Jedi look like he's just in a complete cosplay? It looked like someone had super glued a fake... Jesus of Nazareth's beard to the, to his head and just gone, right, you levitate and we'll film it. <laughs> also with that floating Jedi, like the fact that he's been meditating for like 10 years, it seemed because one, one of the other Jedis at the Jedi Temple says he hasn't spoken to anyone in 10 years. So I imagine he's been sat there levitating for 10 years and stopping for the toilet and having food and going back and levitating. Uh, he suddenly opens his eyes, he floats down and decides to just go... Do you know what? Yeah, I'll kill myself. Uh, there's, there wasn't enough explanation as to why that happened. It was a bit like, why did he do that? Why would the Jedi master or Jedi whoever be meditating for so long and then open his eyes and just kill himself? It just felt a bit like, really? Okay, well, I hope there's a good explanation for it because I can't figure anything out yet. Some of the stuff looks good and some of the stuff looks really cheap. I don't know why, but the Jedi costumes just look cheap. I can't put my finger on as to why. Maybe it's maybe it's the yellow. Maybe it just looks all a bit too clean. I can't tell why, because Jedi's wear robes, and these Jedi's are wearing robes, but it's something about it just feels a bit cheap, and I can't put my finger on exactly what. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a weird one. This whole series so far feels like a mixture of good stuff and bad stuff and all right stuff. It's weird. <laughs> anyway, we have our new Jedi characters uh, and Osha, they're now on a mission to try and find May. They find this guy who's created the potions. They do like a stakeout. Uh, they're waiting for May to arrive. Then there's a really cool scene. Again, this is a, something that I, I enjoyed again. Another good moment where Sol goes to May to try and like talk her, you know, talk around to stop killing everybody and just to, I don't know, get arrested. <laughs> but they have this big fight scene and I really liked it. It was actually quite good. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. It was only short and I don't like it when they cut away from it. They did that thing where they're in the fight scene and it's getting going and then they cut away to just another boring moment and then they cut back and you only see like a little bit more. I wish that they just stayed on these moments for a while. Give, you, give us... Just, if you're going to be filming it, and you've choreographed it all, and you've got these actors who have learned it, just give us all of it. Just, I want to see it all in one go. Uh, but we didn't. Uh, that's another thing, the editing. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but the editing in this show feels a little bit off as well. It's like the cutting back and forward to places, like, and not giving you enough time in each spot. That's another little issue that I found with it, but... Anyway, so we have this whole fight scene, and I really liked it, that I enjoyed that, and then obviously... Um, I can't remember his name, but the the male Jedi who's got the Killmonger hairdo, he comes in, he gets his lightsaber. Well, no, I don't think he gets his lightsaber out, but I do like his lightsaber, the yellow lightsaber. That's pretty cool. 
he comes out and then he's ready to try and join in the fight. I think he even drags the force, uses the force and gets one of her daggers. And then she uses the force and blows all this dust everywhere and she gets away. So now they're going to go on a mission again to try and find her. It was all right. Like, I I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it as well. It was weird. Oh, and then we get the moment where um, May it gets away. She jumps in a speeder and she goes off. But Osha sees her first of all, and they both make eye contact. And Osha's got the gun pointed at her. And I was like, well, she, she either is going to shoot or not. But I imagine she won't shoot it. She shoots it and completely misses, <laughs> obviously. And then she shoots again, completely misses. I was like, I would have maybe preferred it if she didn't try and shoot because... She's trained. She is a Jedi. Well, she used to be a Jedi. She knows how to use weapons. And she completely missed from that distance. It was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> just, oh, why? Just make her either not shoot. Or May flies off quicker and then she accidentally shoots just as she goes. Not while she's just still sat there like that. And then episode two ends with the Jedi Wookiee. Now, I was excited to see this. I was excited to see a Jedi Wookiee. And I just, again, the show seems to be doing this thing where we get the whole episode and then at the very end they'll do like a little minute long thing to try and get you hyped up and excited for the next episode and it just doesn't work. Like the Jedi Wookiee, it just felt like there was these two characters walking along and they're like, oh my god, where are we and what's that sign say? And then the next minute we see this new Wookiee and he like pulls the force, he screams, he snaps the blaster, I think he... I can't even remember what he did with the, with the people. I don't know if he killed them or what, but he, I remember him throwing them away or something, and then he just walks into his cabin. I thought that was just a crap reveal as well. It just felt cheap. It just doesn't feel, like, cinematic or well done. It's weird. It's weird. The whole show feels like that. Some moments feel really good, and then some moments feel like someone's just been given a camera and, and, and a costume and said, like, let's just try and create something like that we think is Star Wars. It's very weird. It's a weird, weird feeling. But as a whole, I would say that I enjoyed it enough to keep watching. It isn't great. I'm not that invested yet. Something needs to happen to make me think, okay, this is actually sick. Um, I'm watching it at the minute just because I want to see more. I will actually finish it anyway because it's it's not terrible. It's not terrible and there was some good moments. So I hope that we get some really, really interesting things that come into the story. I hope it's just not always chasing May because I don't really care. Um, I want something more important to happen uh this master of may this dark sith lord guy i hope that they nail him when he comes into the show properly and i really hope that some like messed up dark stuff happens seeing you know, as though it, we have got like this dark sith looking character uh, i really want things to really be exciting and i want to be invested and um right now i'm not fully there so for me if i was to give these two episodes a rating i would give it a six out of ten <laughs> that's it that's my thoughts review on episode one and two uh i probably have missed loads but that's just coming off the top of my head and my thoughts uh straight away so let me know what you guys think let me know down down in the comments have you actually watched the acolyte yet have you seen any of it what do you think have you enjoyed it have you not I'm already expecting uh, what you guys are going to say. But anyway, let me know down in the comments below. Drop me a like if you enjoyed this video. And if you are new here, hit that, hit that subscribe. Thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one.